You know, uh, this week I had... Well, I, no, it was last week, wasn't it? Was it... My memory's fading. I've gotten too much done. Well, I t- I'll tell you one thing. Did you see the critical thinking videos? I took like two or three days to make all these videos and plot them out and record them and get, you know, everything working. And I've just, it was a diligence thing. I mean, you, you know, you, you've got, you've got the work that you need to get done, right? And then you've got those little things, you know, this, this one kid over here, the neighbor over there, you know, the, the mom whose car breaks down and, or whatever, you've got to go change the brakes for her, right? You've got all these little tiny things all over the world in life, and you have to stop your 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 big project that could help thousands and thousands of people if you do a good job and walk away from it and at least you you hope that your work is quality enough that it's useful to people. You don't want your your work to be so bad that it's not helpful to anyone. But you've got work you're trying to do. You're trying to help as many people as you can. And you've got to stop all of it to go over to the house next door and and help a lady change her brakes, you know. And that's, uh, that's, that's, that's been my life. And making these, um, these critical thinking videos was, was part of that. Because I can't tell you the number of times I've run into people this week who just don't seem to understand basic critical thinking. You, you, you know, you, well, let's consider this. What do you mean? You don't like me? You know, I'm like, uh, <clears throat> you know, when I was in high school, I met with this, this guy. His name is Steve Lossing. And myself and this little high school band group thing that I was with, we sat down with him every week and, and we, we went through, uh, whatever the issue of the day was. And, and we thought critically about our own opinion. We called local politicians on the phone. We, you know, asked, asked ourselves, okay, what's the best argument against our own opinion here? And we sat down and learned how to think critically. And it was very, very, very valuable. Um... I, no, I had another friend this week, you know, I, I said, you know, what, you know, we were talking over the phone and I said, what, what you're saying doesn't, doesn't totally make sense. I'm not going to tell you the details of the conversation. Of course not. I said, but, but look at your own systems of rules. You, you're brilliant, but you have not anticipated what my response is going to be to you. And that means that somewhere there's something going on in your thinking that you're not aware of. Because you're, you're smart. You know what I'm going to say. You know that if you tell me this, I'm going to say that. You know that. So normally you would just skip over that and answer the response that you know I'm going to give so we can all save time and respect each other's intelligence, right? I mean, if you spill the milk on the floor, mom's going to tell you to pick it up, clean it up, right? Okay. So if you spill the milk on the floor, you're not going to sit there and try to say the dog did it. You're going to run and grab a towel. Because you respect your mother. Right. Okay. Good. So, you know, there's some things you don't need to have the discussion. And the more things you understand you don't need to have the discussion about, the more obviously intelligent you are and the more respect you will have earned from people. So my friend emailed me later and he said, you know, Jesse, you're right. I thought and thought and thought about it. I shouldn't not see what you're going to tell me in a minute. And what's really going on is, uh, well, I don't want to say it was, it was a, it was a personal, it was a personal thing. It's like relationships. And I'm not talking about anything juicy, just any relationship that we have, any, any, any friendship, you know, people, they let us down constantly and we get frustrated about that. And that can totally 
get us all disoriented and lost and we're worried about this or we're worried about that when none of it's reasonable. We're still arguing in our minds with some crazy from long before acting like the rest of the world operates that way and it doesn't. So I have these videos on critical thinking and it's good to think critically. Um, a few weeks ago, I had a five hour, well, four and a half catch up conversation with a buddy who's really, really, it's, his name's Benjamin Schuin. You should look him up. Uh, he's in Grand Rapids. And I mean, the guy makes his own bow ties. He, I mean, the, 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 the guy's, I mean, he's brilliant. And we had some really good catch up about, you know, design and the manufacturing industry. And one of the things that came up in the conversation was Vietnam. Now, the United States gets irritated with stuff being made in China, right? You know, China, China, China. You've seen the Trump China mashups. China, China. So China, for better or worse, right or wrong, is kind of a kind of a, a naughty word in the U.S. when it comes to, it, 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 I think, I think it's worse than China deserves. I will be the last person to defend any government, my own or anyone else's. We're, we're, we're all supposed to hate the government, right? That That's kind of how it's supposed to be. But I really believe that China is painted worse than it actually is. And the real problems never get reported. And I don't even know what they are. I think, I think that's probably the case with a lot of people. Um, that does not mean, now think critically, that doesn't mean that I'm against what the U.S. is doing with China. I'm just saying, I think that there is a lot of just China hate. Like, like every news story about China is supposed to be, and therefore China is bad and we should be afraid. I, I don't fully agree with that. But Vietnam is a different story. You know, we did not elect Lyndon Johnson. He was the vice president who went into the White House after JFK got uh, offed by whatever. And after that whole mess with Vietnam, their, their country was messed up. I mean, I've, I've been in Vietnam and I've had the old people scowling at me and I'm like, I didn't bomb your, you know, your, I, I didn't, uh, do you think the Americans wanted that? Um, no, my, my dad was in the MP in Alaska. He signed up before the draft. Cause I, you know, my father and I both had foresight. We, we could see the reading. Uh, we, we, we could read the tea leaves. We could see the writing on the wall. A draft was coming. So he went to Alaska. But, you know, Vietnam had their country messed up. And when you grow up in a country where, you know, you, you try to go out and do a good job and do good work and do farming, you walk in a field, you get your leg blown off by a landmine left there 10, 20 years ago. It's kind of hard to try to go through life as if things are normal. It's like you're trying to deal with the whole world as if it's crazy when you were dealing with a bunch of specific weird problems, but the rest of the world doesn't work that way. And we need... Some level, some level of trade with Vietnam to help them learn that they can live quality lives. Goodness, they don't even put emails on their business cards. They, they don't know. Interaction with Vietnam might be the best way for us to kind of make up to that country what our old politics did to them. Well, that was fun. I need to get to the point. Among many... One trait fails to set Christians apart from all others. Blame shifting. We all like to blame our problems on someone else, our obstacles, our challenges, our injuries. But for Christians, we have one bigger problem that forbids us, supposedly, from doing so. The doctrine of sovereignty. God is sovereign. He has power over everything. Everything. Nothing happens to me which has not first passed through the approving hands of my father. No matter how painful, unfair, inconvenient, all things that happen to me are for my own good if I am truly a Christian. That's hard to accept. And that's the point. 
I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.